Autry filler, and a watercolor, and a newbie, a newbie at acrylic, and a bunch. I play with uh, sculpture as well. Didn't bring any here. I've been doing it about four years. A retired architect. Did that for 40 years and figured that was enough. So now I'm doing this. And I come down here like all the snowbirds because it's warmer than where I live. And in the paint, mix it up. No, really. I mean, because art just doesn't stop there. And when you're creative, uh, one thing becomes another and you don't stop. So come on in. I do things for children too. I, I actually write for, for kids at times, so sometimes my poetry gets interpreted into a piece of art, or the art comes first and then the story. So that's, uh, ah. that's what I do. What's the story there? Um, I don't know. They're, it's called a Sailing in September, so there's got to be something coming along uh, with September. So these two uh, need to have a story told. That's a healing tree. Uh, and one of these is in um, a home for battered women in Montreal oh, because they need healing. Wow. Yes, yes. Come and see my bed. So where else better to use color than in Mexico? And uh, I use it in my bedroom. I design furniture also that has to be practical because one of the things that's missing is storage. So I have the storage underneath. I have a wonderful man, uh, Luis Ibera, who does uh, the work for me. He does the carving and so forth, and then I do the finishing. But I do my history on it. It's Scottish, it's English, Phoenix is rising from the fire, and turtles for uh, living in Ahihik. So it represents me as I am now. Michelle and Mike, yes. and they're actually shooting a video of the Open Studios for us. My name's Steve Weckel, and I'm, uh, I play in clay, and I just recently discovered, about two or three months ago, uh, how did, what encaustic means and what it is, and I've decided that encaustic on my pots looks better than ceramic clays on my pots, and so that's what I'm devoting my uh, attention to right at the moment. But that may change <laughs> because I'm like the water. Flow whichever way my mind takes me. Hi, I'm Kim Eagles. I paint glassware and metal. And uh, I bake it in the oven and then the color is permanent. So it's useful art. Welcome to my home of glass. 
Um, I'm Monica Petrowich. I'm a relocated Canadian uh, to Ahihik for the last four years. I'm a glass artist and I started playing with glass when I was 14 years old. My name is Norm Tihar. I've been in Mexico for 13 years and I have uh, traveled a lot to various different locations in Mexico and come up with what I think is pretty good results. I print my own photographs. I have a big Epson printer. Uh, I take it to the framing place on Guadalupe Street and they do all the rest and it's a very good price. And uh, Mexico is a beautiful place to live. There's so many photo ops here. Hello, I'm Marion Mary Lee, and I um, make jewelry, and today we have had 71 people. Has the uh, shuttle made a big difference compared to last year? Yes, oh yes, that really helped. Well, my name is Winnie, and I am an oil painter, and I am a tapestry weaver. How long did it take to do a painting? Well, I've done one in there in a couple days, but some of these take a long time. It depends on what you're doing. And the weaving? <laughs> and the weaving takes a long time. How do you decide what to do, weaving or painting? Or I prefer weaving. I much prefer weaving, and my loom is usually in the house. It's not out here. And I sit and weave most of the evening, um, and I weave whenever I feel like it. Painting is a, a deliberate thing. You have to get the paints out. You have to, you know, decide what you're doing. And um, so, yes, I do, I do, I do painting, but not as much as weaving. Made by Joe, and so he's sort of we in in Spanish. We have these uh, small handmade clay whistles that are called ocarinas, and so these are based on those, but they're his own design. Can I tell you a little bit about Joe? Absolutely. Joe was my neighbor before I moved down to this area. And Joe still lives in the house that he opens his uh, garage every weekend on Saturdays. And the local children come and do pottery with Joe. And then they take it to the lot next door where they pit fire. And the kids help. They used to help make the fire. I don't know if they still do, Joe. They still do. Yeah. And so they're, they're able to see their work, right, go from, from this, this uh, kind of piece to a fired piece and then they after firing they are able to dig it out and take it out and watch it metamorphosize oh, into fantastic. Different so every week Joe teaches the local kids nice and he I does can't... it in his garage he just opens his garage and all the local kids come, come in, yeah and he works with them. how many kids are you working with now on a weekly basis um nine to fifteen but I've had forty different children 40. have come into my garage wow. that's nice they bring their cousins, and if somebody's on vacation, yeah. they come yeah. in. Yeah. Or they yeah. have their friends, hey, let's go to yeah. Justin. Right, right. They, the regulars sit across the street uh, about 20 minutes before oh. time to open it, and they say, <laughs> bravo, bravo, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you have? Okay, well. Because, see, we never ever get to um, see what the other artists are doing. We're always stuck here in our own studios. <laughs> but this is Adobe Studio. I built it about um, five years ago, and it's a teaching studio. Okay. And we have classes, upcoming classes in fundamentals of fiber, form paper sculpture, basketry, rock hoo, and paper making. And the three of us that are here today demonstrating are all instructors. And so we're not just here to demonstrate and sell, we're here. Right. <laughs>
to tell people about our art and sign them up for classes if they wish to. The basketry here is all natural materials gathered from the land. This is um, banana bark on uh, vines that grow from the trees right after the rainy season or during the rainy season. Then anything else the students want to bring in, they have so much fun bringing in all the garbage from their yards. Poor gardeners, they don't get to haul away anything these days <laughs> because my students bring it in and make baskets out of it. Uh, my name is Brad Mowers and I'm a fiber artist. We're spinning camel down for a uh, shawl project that I'll, I'll later weave with this. What are you spinning? Camel down. Camel down? Mm -hmm. oh. Where do you get camel down in Mexico? Oh, you don't. <laughs> you get it on eBay from the United States. You don't go down? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> we'll take the next one. We were in Peru, Bolivia, Oops. Argentina, oh. and all that last year on motorcycles. And you oh. didn't bring back fiber for Brad? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he would have what asked you, you to do. Brad? <laughs> you will leave me your cell phone for the next time. Yes. Where is this from? This is Kashmir and alpaca. Uh, where did you get your fiber from? eBay. From eBay? Yeah. El, 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 El eBay? Far off land, El eBay. El eBay. El eBay. El eBay. <laughs> For colors of... And this is the three natural colors of cotton that Brad has spun and then woven into this scarf. 